The boost that got us past is a good thing on all fronts. Um, and I make this video because people complaining about it are really fucking annoying and should probably be putting their time into something else, something more productive. Right? Like, I'm all for, you know, like, like you know, cr critiquing something. But I don't get critiquing this. Mario Kart fans seem overly critical about such a, you know, I guess, like, simple, um, like, uh, like just, just a chill franchise. And I, I, I don't get why there's just so much complaining. I'm not going to be debunking anyone in particular in this video, but um, let me just show you what happens when I lock up Boost Wars Pass, because I just want to find some content. And you just get this shit, this shit, this shit, this shit, this shit, and this shit. Again, I won't be debunking anyone here but these examples. I I will point out, though, because I didn't even realize these arguments existed, um, saying that um, there's a lack of characters, a problem with the Boost Wars Pass, is a ridiculous take. Because... One like 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 I I like the Wii U formula where they gave some out of everything, but the thing is, this for me we lose out on tracks, right? Because soon they're going to put the same amount of content into the DLC, or they have to make it a lot more expensive if they were to include everything, you know? Because because I I feel like you're asking for too much then, and if you want the new characters, this the, the booster calls pass. Opens a door to a lot more like DLC potential or maybe even updates, you know, like um, costumes from Tor, um, just new characters altogether, like like Birdo here. Birdo is my favorite Mario Kart character. I'm not going to complain. I'm not acting like the roster for Mario Kart Deluxe is actually bad. It's not. It has the biggest roster. Still the biggest, even if you take away the clone characters. I'm assuming we count Dry Bones as not a clone character. Either way, people love Dry Bones, so it kind of shows a double standard when people want to complain about clone characters. And yeah, I'm not interested in most of them. I don't really care for the baby characters. But, you know, like, like, like I, I, I'm not going to complain. And clearly, they're obviously easy additions to make. And that's not lazy to me. That is just, hey, we might as well add this for more variety. It won't take much time. We might as well do it. Rather than, hey, they're making bad roster decisions instead of adding fan favorites, you know, because fan favorites take my time. I'll be, there are some I don't get, like, like well, I get them, but, um, because it's crossover stuff, but, you know, like, Inklings and the Villagers, they aren't actual characters, they represent the player, and they're supposed to be customizable. The Inklings at least have different colors stuff. And I still think I call like, animations and whatnot, but, um, yeah, I, I don't get it. By the way, Gold Mario just kind of has a, the female villager because God Mario is just a male Mario costume, which is good. Again, costumes as variety. Um, and then we're looking at the absent characters, and there's only eight. Oh, well, nine if you count a paratrooper. Now, I think paratrooper should definitely be a Cooper Trooper costume. I think there's the potential that we get some costumes in like the updates with, that come with the DLC because they add, add general stuff sometimes. I doubt it, but it's possible that we get, like, a Cooper gets his red shell and get a wing variant. Um, and Toad finally can get his colours, hopefully. You know, like, like that stuff that, like, you're like, hey, Nintendo, add this. It's very simple. Just do it. You did it for Charlie and Yoshi. Like, yeah, that makes sense. I get that. You know, th there are valid things to want. And, this, and being disappointed and disliking certain things is valid. Um... But yeah, this roster is objectively the biggest, and it's not even a, a quality, a, a quantity over quality thing, right? Because, again, 30 unique characters. And I've seen motherfuckers try to um, debunk this list I made by saying, oh, the Kooplings don't count. The Kooplings very much do fucking count. Um, I, I, the Kooplings need a part of a video on why they are good characters, and they are individuals, and they should be treated as such. They are just the quirky, you know, like, like, picks, like the ones that are mainly absent in this. Like the one-off picks. But there's a lot of them. There's so many. All seven. Now, I'd get complaining about them in the Wii U version of Mario Kart 8. Because Bowser Jr. wasn't in that game. And yeah, that is stupid. But Angel Lux makes up for that. Because Bowser Jr. is here, King Boo, and Dry Bones and that. It makes the roster feel a lot more complete. 
leaving the only two big absent characters being Diddy Kong and Birdo. I, I can't offend what they're not here. But again, it, it, it's a more complete roster than any other Mario Kart. And yeah, I'd still love for character DLC because you could make because each row is seven characters. You could get rid of a uh, Diddy Kong Jr. because no one fucking cares about Diddy Kong Jr. And then you could just have I mean Donkey Kong Jr. Fuck. Um but yeah, you can have Diddy Kong himself. Funky Kong, uh Honey Queen, Birdo with all her tour colours. Um P Piranha, Wiggler, and Rob, you know, and that'd be cool, that'd be very much a cool thing, and then obviously I'd power through with the costume, and then your roster's complete, it, it, it's such a simple thing, and people want to make a huge deal about how this is such an incomplete roster, like, I, I don't know if they're new to the franchise or what, but every of the of a roster has so many more absent characters, you know, like, like they're way less complete, and they're way smaller, um, like, the biggest before this 42 roster was 20-something with Mario Kart Wii. By the way, there's a list I made covering the differences, specifically the differences between the rosters, the three biggest rosters, Double Dash and Wii are the ones people like to point to for ones they see are better than eight deluxe. You know, this is a whole of a tangent, but I had a whole video on this I never got to release yet, so I might well get into this, make a point on why the game doesn't necessarily need this. Um, like, like, see, if you like Wii more, you're losing out on everything on the left side, and then gaining Birdo, Diddy Kong, Funky Kong. Those are three great characters, but there's just such a big quantity of stuff that it does overpower the others, and it's still quality here, like, Lakitu, the Koopalings, Shy Guy, all the colours, um, you know, and then more crossover stuff, which I'm usually not really a crossover guy, but I like some of them, like Isabel, and I can get liking the others, um... So I'm fine with them. And then Double Dash, you have four more because you get Paratrooper and P for our no Funky Kong. Um, and then you've got all these characters that you just lose um, that we and A Deluxe have. Like, these are good rosters for their time. But again, A Deluxe just overpowers every other roster. Uh, and yeah, I still love DLC. And I think the Boost Cross Pass is opening the potential for character DLC after this. Um, like, like, if they don't, then yeah, I, I'd be questioning that because it's an easy, it's a very lucrative offer to just do the, 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 the booster pass thing, but for more stuff like battle modes, if Tor's adding them, you know, um, and just general car build, so you know, the car um, tires, gliders, and then have them all fit one character. Like, characters like this broomstick cart thing. Um, in tour, you could bring them over, you know, um, and yeah, I love that, I love it, and the Booster Scores Pass is opening that door that we can potentially get even more DLC, and honestly, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't, like, I'm not saying it's basically guaranteed, like, like, I, I, I'm, I'm down here just because I, I, I don't know if they want to do more DLC, but they easily could, and could easily make a ton of money from it, so I don't know why they wouldn't. Um, because it would be easier to do than, like, bringing over tracks from Tor. Um, they're just bringing characters. And also, I haven't even pointed out the Miis here, you know. Like, it looks as a ton of me costumes that are Amiibo only. Whereas we has just two regular costumes. And then, um, Double Dash has no Miis. So yeah, that's another thing worth pointing out. But yes, the point being, the rest is good enough. We don't need more characters. I'd like the more characters. But, yeah, if we don't get any more, then it is fine. You've got a good enough selection of characters and a huge selection of, like, customizable parts for your car. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously more would be welcome, but that's not a fault of Resource Pass. Resource Pass opens the door to the DLC, like I said. Um, and, yeah, the, the, the point stands for this DLC. Like, Mario Kart Deluxe, again, you got all the Wii U DLC for free in it. And that made it a 48 track game, which is more than any other Mario Kart, which the highest before was 32 with 8 cups. Um, so, we already got like a third more of that. Um, 
Well, now we've got half more of that, and then that becomes a third. Right, yeah, maths. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty big already, you know? That's like a lot of content on that. Then the Boot School's Blaster shows up and fucking doubles it. And and this solidifies it. It's like the the best Hancock game, at least for content. If you have any other feelings and whatever player. But yeah, it, for me at least, it definitely solidified it as the best Mario Kart game, you know. And it's not like it's just quality. There are some, there's so much quality within these like picks. You know, got all fan favorite tracks. And yes, they are using assets brought over from tour. This is what people always point out when they say, "Oh, the boost course pass sucks." Why does that matter? Shouldn't that be something to celebrate because tour is so much content and. It's good that they're finally using it in a actual game and not their shitty little boring mobile gacha bullshit. You know, it, like like I, I'm not defending Tor, the game itself, but the content in Tor, it, 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 there's a lot of potential, and bringing it into a deluxe is awesome because we get so much more. If they were doing stuff by scratch and trying to make the graphics better. Not only would that take more time or crunch hours, and I don't want Nintendo employees to have to go for that, you know. And, yeah, that, that's just needless effort. Just bring over the tour stuff. And, again, it's not like it's that simple, right? Or else we'd be getting every single track um, within reason. But, um, yeah, because you still have to, like, map, like, the AI so they know where they're going and all that stuff. you got to, like, make stuff... Um, compatible for micro looks, and it, it's not like they just leave the video right now. Sometimes they all add stuff, you know, silly for the looks, and they always polish up on the graphics in general. You're using the assets, but the, graphically, it's better than Tor still. So, even if you want to make a graphics point, and that's all that it really comes down to now, um, the l- people just complain about graphics, and I, I thought. We as a gaming community didn't give two fucks about graphics. You know, and I don't get it. I, I, I don't get the complaints about graphics because it still looks gorgeous. This all looks so fucking good. You know, it's a different art style, but it has to be. Like, if you want this much content, then, yeah, you're going to have to to take this level of quality. And again, it's not a bad level of quality. People bring this up about the rust all the time, that is quality over quality. When it's not, it's really not. It's just a different thing. There's changes here, there. And it's fine. I'd argue that the, the tour art style, I actually like more than the base game art style because it's not trying to be realistic. I never liked having Mario Kart. I feel Mario Kart should have that cartoony vibe. So yeah, me personally, I actually prefer this style anyway. Um, but yeah, if you want to complain the graphics, yes, it's simplistic. But it's very charming, and it looks great. Look, how can you tell me these graphics are bad? They're not. It's a completely different art style, I get that. But it doesn't matter because, obviously, these tracks are separate to the main ones. You know, like, it's not like you're going from... Like, one style to the other in the middle of a race, are you? So, I see the problems. It, it's like the characters feel out of place. The characters fit perfectly in the carts and whatnot. Like, it still fits perfectly. Like, I really do not get the complaints. Like, this is perfect for Mario Circuit 3, for example. Um, I mean, that's the thing about changes. Calamari Desert, right? They just completely... Where you go through the tunnel and whatnot, and you come out. And then you have, like, the, the Tor City tracks, where, like, each lap changes. This is a completely new gimmick, and it makes things very interesting and very exciting. Um, and, yeah, like, the only other gameplay I can play, I, I, I can see, like, about actual gameplay, is a lack of anti-gravity. And for me, that's always been a take-it-or-leave-it thing. I'm, I love anti-gravity, um, but choosing to... Keep it absent from most of the tracks so far. It's completely fine because I don't. I, it, again, it's not something you need. If you have it wherever, then yeah, cool. But I, I, I won't really mind. Um, like while we do pinball, I guess actually going down with the pins. I can see that should have been like, I guarantee maybe, 
it doesn't matter, not really. And finally, I'm having a, a full um, recreation of Punch Me which looks fucking gorgeous. Um, yeah, you get the fan favorite tracks like that. Tracks that people are clamoring for to be in the game, and they still play as well, and oh, they're not really good. Um, like Snowland, huge glow up. Um, and yeah, it's just insane that people would complain about the graphics. Look how gorgeous Snowland is. And Mushroom Gorge with the with the crystal cave. It's all great. And Mushroom Gorge, it, it plays so well. It's one of my favorite tracks in the entire game. Like, these are still to race on the same quality as they were in previous games. And in comparison to games from, from tracks from this game, they play just as well, if not better. Because it's a, the track picks are so good. Like Mushroom Gorge has the gap, Skip has all the shortcuts. And the cave section is even better because you've got like three routes now. Because you've got in the middle the glider thing. That's cool. And you got Sky of Sunday, these new tracks, which are very interesting and very cool. And it looks awesome. Um, very unique vibe. And this is what they made anti gravity, you know. And it, it works here. The whole track's anti gravity. And like the, the the main appeal of this track is not only like the the, the really cool um, ice cream gimmick. It's the fact that you cut the anti gravity, and there's so many jumps that everything is so floaty that it makes for such a unique and bizarre experience. And I love it. It's a great use of anti gravity, and people complain about it. And I don't fucking get why. I I I don't know what people want. I really don't. I don't know why you care for the graphics when these are good graphics. Why not just take this? It's not like it's just... It's not like you're just taking, like, the bad minimum. Because, no, they put effort into this. Regardless of what you think. Just It's just a matter of using Tor assets just makes sense and will allow for more content without unnecessary effort. And I'm fine with that. There's many things to complain about when it comes to Nintendo. But a... Twenty twenty five dollar DLC for to double the track selection. Track being the most important part of Mario Kart. I don't know why I complain about it. And even then, if you don't want to buy it, like if you're Switch Online, then online your your content's doubled because there you can just play them online for free. So either way, it, it like, so it's technically free content because even if you don't want to buy a DLC itself, online is still got you covered with. Then you play on these tracks. So I don't know why people are complaining. Besides, I guess, fatigue for Mario Kart 9, which fair. But taking it out on this game is ridiculous. Because this isn't a bad thing. No, especially for 8 Deluxe fans. They're going to be able to enjoy so much more. And this certifies this as the best Mario Kart. It, 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 like, it already was in just, like, content. Like, like, there's so much. And now there's so much more. And yeah, I just, I just I don't see any Mario Kart game being this. It does like like the only concern here is it sets a standard that like I don't know if Mario Kart Nine or Ten or whatever will reach, you know, with like how that much is here. And that's probably why they're not even. This is probably because they probably could do more, you know. They don't really have to though, do they? Like like this is already so much, um, and and how they space it out in waves is so good because it keeps. The game alive for years now. Um, like, I've still hyped for Way 3. I know it's not coming until December, but I'm cool with it anyway. <laughs> okay, I'm just looking at a win win situation. You know, even if you don't care about it much, it's not a bad thing. Objectively, it benefits the game, it benefits the franchise, and it opens a lot of doors for new potential and stuff, for like tour trucks and everything. Um, and yeah, just go again. I'm not going to claim up specific individuals, but going back to this, you know, Wave 2 is better by default. I don't know why people are comparing the waves. Personally, I think they're both great. I, I, I don't have a preference. I, I, I think they're of equal quality, and I don't know what people are about. Um, for at least Wave 2 is going to complain about most, but saying by default is ridiculous because, you know, Wave 1 is so much higher behind it, and all the tracks are great. Um, it introduces like the lap chain account with the, with the tour tracks it brought over. Ninja Hideaway is an all time classic, um, a phenomenal and very unique 
uh, original tour track. Um, then you've got the remakes, and people complain about Sky Garden. Sky Garden, I love. You know, I don't get complaints for it. You know, besides, hey, it's not a very faithful remake. But that's just layout wise. And the new you know, is so much better. Make sure it doesn't drag on. And also, a lot of changes were necessary to ensure, um, like, like to ensure like they could do the bad theme, like the floaty clouds on the sides that are very bouncy, and you can like mushroom over them. So much short potential. And people, what they do is complain about Sky Garden having the old shortcuts. But what we have now is so much better because there's so many cool cuts you can do. I show you, but if you know, you know. If you don't, then I don't fucking care. It's a you problem. Like, like, either way, you have to admit that's a good track and it still fits the theme of Sky Garden because it looks gorgeous and it looks very Sky Garden themed. And I love Sky Garden. I love the theme idea and this track makes up. It, 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 it's, it's a perfect remake, in my eyes. I love all the GPA remakes. Um, it looks, and I can't wait for us to get the because we got three more of this DLC, which is fucking awesome. Hell yeah! Um, so yeah, you've got that, and then you've got like other very faithful remakes like Chaco Island, no Mountain, sorry. Um, that has this awesome case section that has with a glider, and it's so awesome. It adds a lot to the track, and yeah, it's a great remake. Um, Coconut Mall is just. For it's the same as the American Sound version. Besides changing the the uh, graphics style, it's still the best looking coconut mall. If you have a big issue with graphics, it's still the praise the most vibrant. I was thinking, I really like the vibrancy with all the uh, the tracks here. Um, and yeah, you've just got so many good tracks. That's a fan favorite right there, coconut mall. And then you've got like. <laughs> what's, what's the other one? Uh, you've got Toad Circuit, one of the best circuit tracks, you know. Uh, like, like, like again, it's still a good track, and this one has made fun of a lot. Like, like I, I agree, it's not really an ideal pick, especially if 3DS only has three picks in DLC, but it's still good. It's still a good track. You know, like, none of this is bad. Yeah, you can have some questionable stuff. You can have some disappointments, or, like, picks and whatnot. But overall, this is a great thing. And any... Christmas I have I don't even mind it and I think critiquing the graphics is dumb. Um so yeah, by default that is insane, you know. To do it by default, because there's a lot of good stuff in Wave One. Um you know. But yeah, whatever, by default because Wave One sucks apparently, I guess. Which I don't get because I still love playing those tracks this day. Um yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't know what point this guy makes. I don't, I don't care. But yeah, it just goes to show what ridiculous claims people make about this. Oh, Shroom Ridge! I didn't even mention Shroom fucking Ridge. Great DS pick to remake. I love it. Like, all banger tracks, all times, I'm still playing them to this day. They haven't got old for me. Um, Eight looks as a whole never got old for me. If it did for you, it... Sucks to suck, I guess, but again, the, the DLC is supposed to, like, revive it for you, you know? Um, we don't really know Mario Kart on the same console. We don't, especially not now. So I I, I, so I don't care. I, I, I don't care about us not getting a new Mario Kart time soon. Because this is great, especially if we're going to get more DLC in the future, which is a possibility, and it's all thanks to the boost course pass. So yeah, what is there to complain about? Like, even if, in your opinion, there's tracks that you think are bad or whatever, what is there to actually complain about? Because it's still, like, like objectively, it's still a good quality. Maybe you don't like it personally, but it's objectively good content, um, both quantity and quality-wise. Um, so, yeah, I just don't get why people complain about this. Like, of all fucking things complaining about. This is my favorite DLC of all time. Already. And there's still four more ways to go. Which is 32 tracks. Which is was usually the amount of a regular game. So that's insane. Because now we've got 64 tracks. Which, at the moment, which is double the original amount. And we still got 32 more to go. So, so yeah, it's just incredible. Incredible game. Incredible DLC. 
stop complaining about it, please. And every time a wave comes out, I can't wait to just hear people go, well, when the graphics aren't good, you know, zero out of ten, I'm going to complain about it. Like, they all are echo chambers. That's why I don't watch any of those videos I showed examples of. I know they will make the same fucking points. And they're all dumb. So, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, see you next video. Bye.